This is our wrap-up video of our Ruby on Rails series. Well, let's take a look at what we covered here. First off, our first set of videos we went through and found out what a web application was and what Ruby on Rails was and how they work together with a web browser and a database. We also looked at some of the philosophies behind Rails, such as don't repeat yourself, meaning you know you should only have one bit of code and that should be the only place where that code is and if you find yourself putting the same code in different places you're doing something not quite right also convention over configuration if you follow rails conventions in a lot of ways it saves you a lot of headache versus having con to configure everything in every, every way another philosophy behind rails is the agile philosophy I encourage you to go look at the agile manifesto about getting something done or to use their term, getting real. We also looked at model view controller and how that worked in detail with controller model, your database, your views, working with your web browser. We went through and looked at different tools that you could use with Ruby on Rails, such as IDEs or editors, editors such as TextMate or RadRails, an IDE based on Eclipse, a simple editor such as SciT, various tools such as the Council, and mostly command line tools we looked at, the Generate Script, the Council script itself, the server, the built-in server, WebBrick. We looked at a lot of different tools that way. We looked at the basics of the Ruby language, such as Let's take a look at some code here real quick. How we define a class, how we define methods, the syntax, the lack of any kind of closing characters. It looks for just the line feed and the keywords in there. The various types of structures used within Ruby, such as the hash, as we see down here. Here's a typical hash. We also went into the basics of Rails, how to set up an, an application using the script or the command rails and then application name and the directory that gets set up. We went through how this directory is actually configured and what all these files actually represent and how you modify them or what you need to modify to make your application work. We went through how to install pretty in-depth installation on Windows and on Mac OS X and there's actually some instructions on Linux also included in the working files. We talked about Active Record or how Ruby on Rails interacts with our database via this class. So here we have a comment class which is an Active Record which corresponds directly to our database, a table in our database. We looked at what scaffolding was, which is the auto-generated programming that Rails lets us get up to speed pretty quick with using the script generate and giving it a name of a controller that we want to create, and then it'll create the scaffolding to get us set up with list, show, new, create, edit, update, and destroy, and a basic list so we can start from someplace and not scratch. We looked at Rails controllers in depth and how they interact with views and models. We looked at views quite in depth, especially how you use the form helpers, those types of tools. We covered testing, where we went in and did some tests on controllers and on models, and how you set those tests up with regards to your to your fixtures files. We played around with a little bit of Ajax Web 2.0, showing some neat GUI tricks and some auto-completion tricks. We talked a little bit about deployment strategies, picking a platform, picking a database, how you actually move your Rails application into a production environment. And finally, we looked a little bit of where additional Rails resources were available on the Internet. If you have any questions, you can contact me at this email address, alavtc at gmail.com.